Jim Ellison. Hello, and thank you for having me here today. I appreciate this opportunity. Um, about me, I'm actually a Republican. <laughs> I realize there may be some folks in here that are Democrats, so I appreciate your indulgence. Uh, my background came, uh, started, uh, let me start with Gonzaga University where I uh, went to school and I studied engineering, finally took a degree in English literature, so I have a Bachelor of Arts at Gonzaga. I worked my way through school by working for an oil company, Union Oil Company of California, now known as Unical. And during that period of time, I had to take a 25-volume course on petroleum products. After that, I went to work, uh, after I graduated, I left Union Oil Company and went to work for a pharmaceutical company and worked there 27 and a half years and retired uh, from that company, it's called Bristol Myers, and learned a lot about the healthcare industry myself as I communicated with doctors, hospital administrators, nurses, and so on. And then after retiring from Bristol Myers, I went to work for A.G. Edwards as a financial consultant and a stockbroker, where I became aware of a, a number of different great companies in this country. and. Um, it was just a wonderful experience working with a lot of people and helping them think about how they manage their money. And I forgot to mention, while I did work for Bristol Myers, I went to Portland State University at night and I earned a degree, a Master's of Business degree, where it helped me understand a lot about business and a lot about economics. And if I may just talk about economics for a minute, you know, the three bases of economics are land, labor, and capital. And a lot of us focus our discussion on political times and political matters about the laborer, the worker. But if we don't have land and capital with which laborers can go to work and do whatever it is they do, they don't have a job. And if we keep punishing capital in this country, as I hear politicians want to do, and, and I know Mitch has done a lot of great work, but in large, I think our governments continue to think about how we can tax people how we can take money away from capital. With your tax and my wages, which if I had surplus wages, I might invest it, and uh, that would become capital, and that would buy the equipment and the buildings that people would go to work in. But we, in this country, for some reason, we tend to denigrate businesses, we tend to denigrate large corporations, which hire many, many people, which those people all pay taxes, and somehow big businesses, is, got a terrible mantra that's been placed around it. And I don't understand that. These are great industries like Intel, Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, uh, PepsiCo, and yet we, people always are bad-mouthing industry. And little companies become big companies. But back to the idea of capital. If we keep punishing capital in this country with all kinds of great schemes and ideas, which are some of them very nice-sounding, for sure, and believe me, a lot, I enjoy living in Oregon. It's a beautiful state. But let me divulge into one area where we're using, uh, well, I'll just call it a scheme, this whole idea of man-made global warming. Uh, I know a lot of people believe that. I personally think uh, global warming goes on without man's activity. It cools without man's input. So it, the globe cools and warms in its own way, for its own reasons. Sunspots, changes in magnetism, changes in ocean currents. So here we are coming up with all these great schemes that are going to put a burden on capital that will supposedly help man-made global warming. Well, in fact, the Earth has been getting warmer for about the last nine years. I don't know if anybody told you that. I don't know if anybody told you that the Earth, the carbon dioxide, which they want to blame now, as you recall, the Greenies started with Freon, they start with methane, and now it's carbon dioxide. It's going to kill us all, right? No, it isn't. Carbon dioxide is good for the planet, it's good for us, and it's good for uh, the uh, plants. You probably all know about photosynthesis. And so here we are putting out carbon dioxide, which through photosynthesis is used by plants. The plants take the carbon to grow and give off oxygen at night, which we like to breathe. If we do have an uh, increase in, global, in carbon dioxide, Maybe we don't have enough plants in the world. The great parts of the world have been denuded of plants. Mongolia, some people talk about the rainforest. But I'm telling you, we're not causing global warming. It happens by itself, and the earth gets cooler by itself. But, and so we're going to punish capital. And somebody mentioned renewable energy. Well, they, did, they excluded dams, for example, and water. Water is renewable. 
and uh, it keeps going through the dams. Nuclear energy could be considered renewable because there are types of nuclear power that can actually create more energy than is expended. And nuclear waste is not a problem, so we need nuclear power. But I've got to tell you, if I'm elected, I'm going to work to stop and control increased taxation. I'll work to keep the taxes, uh, the cap on our real estate taxes. I understand in caucus the Democrats uh, happily talked about removing that 3% cap. And I think that would bother every one of you, even if you're a tenant, because the landlord will pay more taxes. So Franklin Roosevelt talked about the forgotten man. The forgotten man was in those days the gentleman that had lost his farm or his house during the Depression. Well, I'd like to submit today the forgotten man is the taxpayer. Everybody has a wonderful scheme. Everybody has a wonderful thing. It's going to make our life better. But I've got to tell you, you better ask yourself, who's going to pay for it? And I'll work to make sure that that question gets answered appropriately if I'm elected. Another thing I'd like to talk about is everybody wants to talk about health care. And I know this is not appreciated by some people, but I'd just like to bring up the idea of abortion. We're, we've killed 40 million unborn babies in this country. And we blithely go about our lives not realizing that somewhere today probably in Portland there's going to be an unborn baby died. At 10 weeks you have a fully formed human being in the, in the womb. And yet, for somebody's convenience, we're willing to flush that. I'm sorry to use those terms, but uh, I hope you consider me for your candidate. Thank you. We'll now take.